there are basically three types of natural selection. One is directional. So this means, for example, if we're talking about human evolution, if only tall people could survive, then that means all short people and all medium-sized people would die. That's very extreme. That would be an example of directional selection. Thank goodness this is not how natural selection works for humans and heights. For us, it's more about average, but directional means only one extreme or the other extreme is actually selected for. So some examples, uh, we're gonna be talking about this bird a lot, the great tit, because the earlier they breed, they tend to have greater success. And so this is probably due to climate change over time. So uh, in this case, those that are breeding earlier are being selected for, those that are breeding late, they're less likely to survive and so they don't have kids, can't pass on their offspring. So that trait tends to disappear. So that's an example of directional selection. So for humans, I talked about height earlier. Stabilizing selection is actually what kind of dictates uh, height for humans. We can kind of imagine it as a normal distribution curve. There's very few extremely tall people and there's very few extremely short people. Most people tend to be bunched around the average. So that's an example of stabilizing selection. I am right about here. Intermediates are selected for and extremes are selected against. So not to say that if you're really, really tall that you have no chance of surviving, but that's just the way that uh, a lot of traits kind of get uh, selected for. So for humans, uh, that's the case. Here's another example using the same bird, the great tit. They tend to lay an intermediate clutch size. What that means is the number of eggs that they lay um, there's kind of an average amount and those that lay too many eggs, it costs too much of their energy and not enough of them are gonna survive. If you only lay a few, most of them are gonna get destroyed or eaten or cracked and so you have no chance of passing on your genes to the future. So just the right amount, just the right amount tends to be what is selected for. So that is called stabilizing selection. And the last example is more kind of uh, less common, I guess. It's called disruptive selection. And so for disruptive selection, instead of getting kind of a graph that looks like this, this is directional selection. Um, instead of getting a graph that looks like this, which is more like normal uh, distribution, which is stabilizing selection, you tend to get a graph that looks something like this, where two extremes are selected for and tend to have a higher chance of surviving. So an example here, we don't have an example for the great tits. We're going to talk about the lazuli bunting bird. And for the lazuli bunting bird, there are kind of two types of feathering in males. You have the really super over the top peacock style, bright, super attention catching feathers. And then you have really boring ones. I am like this. I am the super bright attention feather wearing kind of guy. It's fantastic. That is how I've been successful in Messiah. Yes. That's me. <laughs> Fine. My Messiah just told me I'm this. This will not be a public video, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Lazuli bunting bird, Messiah. Uh, yeah, really dull ones are successful because no one notices them. Okay, you're right, that is more like me. They're successful with reproducing, I don't know, because maybe the other female Azuli bunting birds feel sorry for them. It's more like because they have sneaky reproductive methods. The ones that are really flashy also survive, but if you're somewhere in between, if you're just average Joe, you have kind of boring fancy colors and you're not like super duper boring, you're just in the middle and I guess really no one pays attention to you, they get no chance of making babies. Sorry, fellas. But if you're really super dull or really super bright, you have a higher chance of, of surviving if you're a lazuli bunting bird. So that's an example of disruptive selection. Maybe that'll be a, a fun thing to try to do. Think of human behaviors um, that are directional, stabilizing, and disruptive. Oh, we must see this uh, lazuli bunting bird. So here you go. Fancy one, which I want to be. Dull one, which I am. That is types of natural selection.